Welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. It's time for everyone's favorite minigame, Chocobo Hot and Cold. How do you like to waste time today? <laughs> Are you guys no. saying that sarcastically or not sarcastically? I it's tell. it's feverishly addictive. Like, yeah. yeah. Chocobo it, Hot it, and Cold. It, 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 it's weirdly addictive for something so simple. Chocobo forests have a long history in Final Fantasy, though. I think 4 was the first one to have them. Uh, yeah, you... Um... Maybe three. Yeah. Actually, three was the introduction of the the chocobos, if I remember correctly. And I the thought, Mughals. Thought, if it was um no or no, no I want to say was Final Fantasy two the first introduced chocobos. Uh, maybe it no, was I two was chocobos. I, I, I'll Mughals. look it up. But in Final Fantasy three, you could go to chocobo forests and then walk around on chocobos on the overworld, and that lets you skip random encounters and go faster. So right. Well, my first introduction to chocobo forests was in Final Fantasy eight. Really? Yeah, okay. and you know what? I don't fucking remember what you did there. I just remember <laughs> that you get the chocobo. Where am I? But here's the thing about the chocobos in Final Fantasy VIII, okay? I live in America, obviously, right? And the thing that you did with chocobos was this little fucking Tamagotchi game that they didn't sell in America. I only got to play it because someone found a way to play it on a PC. But obviously you can't link that up to your Final Fantasy VIII game, so you're not going to get any of the in-game bonuses for it. So it's pointless. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy II was the introduction to Chocobos. It's th three must have been Moogles, then. Three was... Uh, let me see. I was looking for Chocobo Force in particular. Cause I know uh, three had a fat Chocobo, too. Um... Four had Chef Fat Chocobo. Yeah, the Force. Fat Chocobo. The Fat Chocobo, uh, yeah. You know, my, uh, I didn't even know the Fat Chocobo was a thing until I tried summoning Chocomog in 7, and just randomly a Fat Chocobo drops out of the sky and lands <laughs> ass What happened? <laughs> I thought for a moment that Moogle's name was Meme. It was, it was, it was Meanie, I think, or Mean. Uh, yeah, whatever. Mean, eh? But yeah, I, it's probably Mean, eh? But, you know, just looking at it like, uh, uh, <laughs> quick. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's Chocobo Hot and Cold. It's it's a game of hot and cold. So you get warmer. Warmer still. Warmer. Quay. 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 I just, I imagine the Chocobo being really disinterested, like Quay. 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 Now, I, I do believe <laughs> Quay was always supposed to be the sound Chocobo's made, but in Final Fantasy VII, uh, the English version at least, it was Wark. Wark. Gotta put you to Wark. Just a translation <laughs> disagreement, I suppose. I guess right? I, well, yeah, oh, I'm... the other thing is that there's only ever one treasure in existence at a time in Chocobo Hot and Cold, so you gotta find that one, and then you gotta zero in on it. Sometimes it's a bit maddeningly precise, though. Yeah, like it is, it like is. It is here. Like it is right now. <laughs> I think, like, the more the, the, the better the treasure is, the more precise it is. But, like, the, the timer's just about done, and Ryan... I found you... nothing. Got a jack and shit. Worth zero points. So you can only what find it? one treasure at a time. Uh, no, you can't. No, it, it's just it's. There's only one thing at a time. Once you find something, there's another thing that pops up. Okay. Yeah. So oh, so you can find more than one thing per, per. Yeah. Uh, you can find up to eight treasures before Meanie gets you to stop. Yeah. Okay. And do you need to buy Gishal greens in order to play? The no, game? that's just that's just to summon it on the overworld. But you need to have some on the overworld. And have you can find it. you oh, can yeah, find Gishal greens here too. That's the other thing too. that makes. Oh, there we go. That's the other thing that makes uh, the Chocobo in 9 so good, is you can summon it fucking anywhere. Well, well anywhere, anywhere, there, anywhere there, there are Chocobo tracks. Oh, uh, yeah. There's usually Chocobo tracks. Yeah, there, 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 there's Brackle Place all over the place, so you should be able to summon uh, the Chocobo pretty easily. But yeah, you can buy Geishal Greens from Mini, but you can also find them here, which I always do. Um, sometimes, yeah, the, the two things about... Chocobo Hot & Co. for me, early game, was one, being really fucking picky with where the treasure is, and two, uh, because Choco's um, beak level is so low. It takes why forever to still, dig things up. Wh why are you going around? Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. There we go. It yeah. takes a long time for Choco to dig stuff up, and the greater the depth uh, numerical value is, the bigger the treasure. So if you find uh, a treasure with a depth of, say, like in the 50s or 60s, most often than not, it's going to be a Chocograph. Yeah, he found the stone with patterns, that being the first chocograph. Yeah. The, um, uh, the thing about Choco's beak strength is it sort of levels up as you play the game. Yes. Uh, Which so makes you, you want to play more. Yeah, you can dig deeper and faster, but 
Um, you don't necessarily know this until you get your first beak strength level up. So is it? So should you uh, ride the chocobo around to get places, or should you walk around and fight random battles? Important note: go back through Lindblom, go back to the business if you can find random uh, monsters outside. There's an axe that you can get blue magic from. You'll want it. Uh, Did, yes. You got Lemon Glove from the Mandragores? Yeah. Or the okay. Axes, as I call them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can get nine Choco Grabs this early on in the game. And, and, yeah. a piece, and a piece of the spare one. Yeah, you had a lot of time to waste. <laughs> because I, I spent an hour just getting three. <laughs> I like how Gizm Luke's Grotto shamelessly uses the same text font that, like, so many fantasy things use, including Baldur's oh, Gate's no. title. Oh no, oh no, all of these rap people died. It's almost like we could have stopped this or something if we didn't spend five hours looking for fucking Chocobo shit. <laughs> hey, hey, I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Found lots of shit. Yeah, these guys didn't find anything, except death. <laughs> This is your speaks. This is your sneak preview of Green Scratch Commentary's Final Fantasy IX Abridged series. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. We're not actually doing that. No. Oh no! I said too much. Uh, if we were to take on a project like that, we'd better damn well be making six figures. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> six figures. <laughs> well, it you know that. Have to be high six figures. It could just be. You know, that guy would have lived if you didn't talk to him. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's, like, it's like, it's like Professor Booster. <laughs> well, no, he would have lived. He would have been, like, right in pain forever if you didn't talk to him. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> you gotta talk to him. Oh, do you need the yeah. bell for to get the yeah. yeah, bells yeah. open doors here. The bells are the keys. You ring them, and they shatter. Hey, at least there's an explanation for why the door eats the key now. Oh my gosh, Kina's idle animation is the most hilarious thing I've seen in a while. It's like a penguin waddle. Yeah, he's like, droop, 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 droop. <laughs> I'm good to eat you. Oh, I'm on the ogre now. Oh, that thing looks pretty badass. Well, it is, re it is really badass. badass. So. What I really like about Zidane and Dissidia, I think, is that he switches between daggers and butterfly swords. Like mid combos, right? Or how do you? Yeah. How does this idea even play? Does it play like a fighting game, or does it play like? Okay, okay. Picture um, the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games, and give it an infinite jump, I, an infinite double jump. I, I've even. never, I've never played that. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, Budokai Tenkaichi. Uh, eh. uh, no. Uh, Pikmin Torment Fighter. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait, there's a... No, no, I'm no, kidding. I'm he, kidding. He's, we're okay. joking. <laughs> it's like, wait, they did that? I, I, I well, they're doing, Pokken t they're doing Pokken tournament now. They, so, that better know. come out of... That better come out of the of Japan and onto... It Korea. is. Oh, it will. Oh, because, it's like, I've, a... I've recently started enjoying Tekken quite a bit, so that with Pokemon, yes, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's looking like, actually, Pokken tournament plays more like behind the back fighters. But uh, we'll see. The thing about uh, the thing about uh, fighting games in Japan, though, is uh, Japan actually has popular arcades still. So yeah. fighting games come out in the arcades first, and then they make the console version. Yeah, like, I think okay. that's that's where Sega makes most of their money in Japan is arcades. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but but you know, since we don't have like many arcades over here, they don't bother localizing the arcade version for us. They just wait until they do the console release. Yeah, because Tekken Seven's already out in arcades in Japan. It's just not out on console. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. although it might be out on console by the time this video goes up, who fucking knows? Yeah, always throw that safety net. Yeah. Um. Okay. So now we're actually fighting black mages. Uh, yep. Yeah. They've been programmed to say at least one word now. That's ouch. So <laughs> how? Oh, Tina does decent damage with her the physical. Board, yeah. Um. Uh, is it me or is it her, her accuracy pretty shit though? Well, if not. Accuracy. Her damage seems to wildly fluctuate. Well, she did. Uh, she did more damage than Freya did. With, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but she'll, she'll also do a lot less. I think there actually is a random element in Kina's damage output. Hmm. I'm not really sure how it works, though. Which Wait, is like, why you should. Different. Which is why you shouldn't rely on Kina. Yeah, like you know, Ryan right there stabbed the Black Mage for like 400 damage. Sometimes I'll do the same thing, and I'll do as little as 26. Yeah, here, here's the thing. Uh, Kina is pretty much custom tailored to be an unreliable character because 
A lot of JRPGs have joke characters that are completely and utterly fucking useless. Chrono Cross has one. Chrono Cross God. also has like 50 characters, though. Yeah, uh, Chrono Cross has. Oh yeah, you're right. See right there, I just did 70. I w I wasn't finished. Chrono Cross has one, and it's one of the three characters that you have to recruit to begin one of the very earliest plot missions. So God help you if you pick that character. Yeah, but so. Okay, I just looked it up. Uh, Quintus Forks do random damage. Oh wow. So it's like um, it's like the Wonder Shot, don't you? So um, is the black is the blue magic worth it for for Kina though? Um, depends on what you want to do. Uh, specific spells are very worth it. Kina, of course, like all blue ma blue mages, has 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 mighty guard, which and, 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 as, as, as well as as well as MP hammer. Yes. Oh yeah. Which you can get pretty early on. MP hammer is like the only way to damage an enemy MP in the game, I think. And there are some bosses you can totally destroy with it. You can get MP Hammer as soon as Bermetia, I believe. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I believe one of the enemies in Bermetia does. Yeah, yeah I think that, the, the thieves, I think, have it. And good yeah, luck with but, that because they steal the uh, fucking. That just goes thing. back to the same problem that the uh, that the uh, that blue mages have in general is you really need to know not just that the ability is there and what it's what it can be used for, but also what to use it on. Yeah, and the strategy guy is telling me to go play online. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Son of a play bitch. online. What a joke. So I'm guessing that Kino's not a character you guys use very much, then. No. Uh, it, again, it depends on what I want to do. Like, do I want to be a cheap ass and grind Grand Dragons Disc One? Then um. yeah, I'm <laughs> using Kina. <laughs> but uh, uh, most often, no, I, I'm not Kina using. Kina also has Frog Drop, which Ryan already learned, and Frog Drop is, I believe. Kina's equivalent of thievery and dragon's quest, quest, which uh, means the more frogs you catch, the Wait, more damage Wait, hold on. They, they named an attack dragon's quest. Dragon crest. Oh, dragon's crest. crest. Oh. That, 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 that was me mispronouncing oh, because okay. of all the cues being thrown around. You know. Okay. Well. Okay. So then they didn't quite go there. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, dr dragon quest is Freya's ability, and Freya is the dragoon. Yeah. So the and that gets more powerful the more dragons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Does does Freya have to kill the dragon or no? no. Anyone can kill the dragon. Oh, yeah, so that'll be useful since Ryan is grinding grand dragons in the playthrough. Well, yeah, kind of, but you need to kill a fuck lot of dragons for it to to hold a candle to thievery. The thing about thievery that makes it so awesome is that you probably stole a lot along the, uh, throughout the playthrough before you even knew thievery existed anyway. Yeah, so you it's freaking going to clepto. Do a hell of a lot of damage. <laughs> so, uh, dragon dragon quest crest on the other hand, you don't necessarily have to run into that many dragons throughout the game, so it could do piss poor damage by the end of the game. Uh, Quinna's frog drop is her level times the number of frogs caught. So if you catch a hundred frogs, then it could be. If it was a hundred, if, if Ryan caught a hundred frogs at this point in time, which you need a lot of fucking time to do so, uh, it would do sixteen hundred damage because she's at level sixteen. And that—that's a lot. You know, that's actually at this point in time. It, yeah. yeah. If you want to literally wait that long to catch a hundred frogs, go right ahead. But. Oh, uh, do they regrow on a timer? Yes. Okay. Well, technically, Ryan already has a pretty powerful blue magic spell right now. It's Limit Glove. What is that? You gotta get it. Limit Glove does instant guaranteed max quadruple. damage. Quadruple. Yeah, it does max damage if Quinn's HP is in critical levels. Specifically, one, one. HP. Oh. Yes, so which, which do you, I do. Well, how do you manipulate her to be at one HP? Kill her and revive her a Phoenix down, so I hope she comes back with one HP. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. you revive anywhere from one to nine. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so, can you see how you can grind Grand Dragons as early as this one? Yeah. Well, if you're lucky and they don't, they don't hit her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's gonna be oh, there's gonna be plenty of saves coming. Yeah, there are, there have always been tricks to get your HP at exactly the right number that you need for a special ability. Oh wait, oh you just uh, you just I pilfered that. his body. Yep. What happens if you give a silent prayer? You can check him again and get more stuff then. Yeah, give him a silent prayer and then take a shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Or if you like me, I just take a shit. Oh, He's not gonna need it. Oh lord, please forgive me for being a massive douche right now. Alright, what's in this pocket? Oh, <laughs> candy! Sweet! Oh, 